Okay, at this point, I would say we have quite a uh, ugly looking landscape, <laughs> but, but, but at least we know how to add the things and change the things and do different things. And the process of making our landscape look beautiful is a process of artistry, of trial and error, of testing different things and figuring out what combination of ingredients really makes for a beautiful looking landscape. So in this lesson, we are actually going to learn how to add a water plane, rivers, oceans, that sort of thing, to our Unreal Engine a landscape. In order to do this, we are going to have to enable an Unreal Engine water plugin. So if you go to Edit, and then if you go down to the Plugins section here, and you just type in Water, there will be two water plugin options. You can go right ahead and just enable both of these. Now, whenever you enable a plugin, you will need to restart your Unreal Engine editor. So go ahead and restart that now. So rather unusually, I got an error message when I loaded up my Unreal Engine editor on the off chance that you got this message too. Collision profile does not include blah, blah, blah. Add entry to Unreal Engine. And then if we close and restart our project at this point, we will see if we get that error next time. It should be fine at this point. Okay, and this time Unreal Engine loaded without any error. So it all is tickety-boo. You probably won't get that error, but on the off chance that you do, I'm gonna go ahead now and open up our level. Okay, so now under the Place Actors panel, if you type in water, you will see a whole bunch of water options. We are going to start with the water body ocean. So you can just drag that and drop that somewhere into your Unreal Engine level. It may take a moment of pausing and loading, but eventually we should see some water appear. There we go, just gonna compile some shaders here. There we have it, isn't that beautiful? Now at the moment, our water level is a tad high. And in fact, if we hide our water body ocean, you can see our landscape is gone. Well, we need to do one additional thing here, and that is to head on over to the outliner section, make sure you've got your water body ocean selected, and then go over into the details section. You are going to be looking for the water map where is it? Water map height settings right here. Water map height settings. So the default blend mode is alpha blend. So let's go ahead and change this to a max. Give it a second to load up. And there we can see our landscape has popped back into being. The only thing I need to now do is turn on my water body ocean visibility. In fact, I didn't need to turn this off. I was just trying to show you fine folks what we were doing. So the next thing I'm going to do with my water body ocean still selected is I'm gonna actually lower that height. It's a little bit high up. So I can just go ahead and I can drag that arrow and I can move the water level down to a level that I think actually looks good. Okay, so I've lowered my water down a little bit. I think that looks actually pretty, pretty good. Not too bad. Now, the other thing that you might be interested in doing with your Unreal Engine water is uh, affecting the wave height and uh, some other characteristics of the actual ocean itself. So over in our outliner, I'm gonna make sure I have my water body ocean still selected. Go to details and scroll down until we find wave. And then we got the wave source right here. And then we've got the Gershner wave. I'm going to double click that to open it up and it will open up a panel right around here that looks something like this. If I go now and I expand on some of these, there we go, expand all of these little menu options open, we can see that we've got all sorts of different settings now for our ocean waves. Okay, so you know what? Because of the size of our landscape from our imported uh, height map, uh, I was getting some pretty slow performance on my computer in order to show you the waves. What I've actually gone and done is I've recreated our, our water body setup and I just put it into like a smaller, simpler, much uglier little terrain. Um, so what, one thing you may notice if you're following along is that you have a water body uh, sort of island section here. The kind of typical thing that is done with this, this is kind of like the center point from where the rest of the ocean uh, kind of spreads out from. But kind of the, the thing that's usually done with that is you just kind of hide that under your geometry. Okay, so let's check out some of our wave settings. Right now we've got a pretty calm looking ocean and I just highly recommend coming into the wave settings and adjusting the sliders around a little bit. For example, the minimum wavelength, the maximum wavelength. You can just pull the sliders around and see what sort of changes those make. The uh, minimum amplitude the maximum amplitude oh, that's probably too big running the slider back and forth 
is kind of a nice way to visually and, and get that reference experience for what these different configurations do because steepness fall off large weight steepness angular spread max amplitude like what do these things even mean right well the easiest way to figure all those things out run that slider back and forth and just kind of see for yourself right what do they mean what do they do well there you go now you, you now you see right so let's take a look at this ocean water color the material that's actually used to create the water it's pretty it's bright and it's blue doesn't look that realistic but we can actually affect that material so let's go ahead and we can close our Gerschner waves and then we can go to water body ocean and in the details panel we can scroll down and we're looking for the material that belongs to this water actually you know what we can just actually probably search in material like that oh and before we actually do this part make sure under your settings of your content browser that you have show engine content and also show plugin content selected because we are going to be grabbing the material from the plugin directory of the water plugin and we're going to make a copy of that material and modify it so that we can make it look a little bit more realistic also let's make sure that we have two content browsers open and we will set one of our content browsers just to our nice content root directory that'll be fine for now and we can actually just highlight our second content directory and it doesn't matter where we are in there because we will browse now to our water material. So back to our details panel, we've searched material and under rendering, we see one called water material. And then we see the water material that's a part of the plugin base directory of files. Uh, let's go and browse to it by clicking that little icon to search for it. And it will be highlighted now in our content browser, this one here, water underscore material ocean. And now instead of modifying this directly, we want to make a copy of it. If we modify this directly, what we do to this file will apply to all of the other water body oceans that we ever make in this Unreal Engine version installation. So we want to make a copy of this so that we don't overwrite the root file. So we can just actually drag this back into our other content browser and then somewhere into our content browser and we can just say copy here. And there's our there's our own copy version. Let's just call that copy, copy of water. That's fine. Just so we know it's a little different. And now we can go ahead and take our copy of water by selecting it and we can assign that to our water material. Nothing will visually happen, but our water material is now being drawn from our copy of that water material instance, which is an exact copy, which is why nothing changed. So, so I went ahead and I added some sand to my landscape using our good old friendly Quixel bridge, which we learned about in our previous lesson. And then I just applied that to our auto landscape material in place of the cliff and the grass texture. Now we're using sand textures. So let's go right ahead and open Now You don't have to do this. This is just to make it a little bit prettier for this lesson. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our copy of Water Material Ocean. Now there are just oodles and oodles of configuration options in this material instance, very much like our landscape material instance. Our water material instance also has all sorts of different configuration options that we can play around with. Let's just, however, scroll down until we see the global vector parameters value and go ahead and tick on absorption and scattering. Now, scattering basically affects how light interacts with water and then absorption sort of affects the color of water. Let's go ahead and change our alpha from 0 0.5 down to 0. As you can see, we kind of get more of a transparent look there. And then let's go and change our alpha of our uh, absorption level. We'll just kind of scroll around with that until we find something that we think looks kind of nice. There we go. That's a little bit better. It's got a bit of a Mediterranean blue look to it. Now we're just kind of tweak that around until we find something that we that we kind of like. Anyway, I think that's actually looking a little bit more realistic already. Now, the one other thing you may notice is that we have two sections of water. Uh, so right here, we have the color of our water without any landscape shining through it. And then we have the landscape shining through it underneath here. And then we have even like this far reaching water over there. So that far reaching water is actually affected by a different material. Uh, and if we want to affect that as well, let's go back to our outliner section and this and click on our water zone. Uh, let's also then go to our details section and look for the water far mesh material and just browse to it like we did before. 
uh, we will make a copy of this water far mesh and we will move that back into our we'll or not move it rather we will copy that very important copy that into our root directory uh, then I'm going to go ahead and just rename that so that we know it is our copy that we're working with. We can assign that to our water far mesh. And now if we go ahead and open up our water far mesh, we can scroll down and we can look for the same settings, which are global vector parameter values. We'll enable on scattering and absorption. And now we can actually just affect that in the same way as we did our water material instance. And if I'm checking back here, I just want to match those two things up. There we go, alpha of, alpha of two, uh, put that down to zero, and then I'll put that into our far mesh over here and change them. Now they should look the same. Whoops, now they should look the same. You may have noticed that our landscape underneath looks kind of funny and that it just sort of stops. Uh, what I would probably do here is I would probably go to the landscape section and look for our sculpt tool and then I would actually just hold down shift of course to push instead of pull and I would deepen up that landscape a little bit so that it seamlessly transitions from the lightest color to the darkest color. And all I've really done here is I've push down the landscape so that the transition from shallow to deep is a little bit more smooth instead of just a straight line like that. It just transitions a little bit smoother by setting the height of the landscape down lower so that it just creates a more gradual appearance. Anyhow, that's far from perfect, but you guys get the general idea. And I think that covers our lesson on water ocean bodies. There are additional water features as well to discover, and we'll take a quick look at those in the next lesson. This lesson is from my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can get access to the entire course on my Patreon page. All of my Patreons get full access to all of my courses, and I will be adding more courses and tutorials over time. Links in the description. Thank you for all the support.